at Kapi'olani Medical Center, said to be the first in almost 15 years. It's been noisy all morning long, and Annalisa standing by. Good morning, Annalisa. Hey, Billy. So again, this strike started at 7 a.m. today. Uh, more than 600 nurses from Kapi'olani Medical Center for Women and Children voted for this strike. Uh, you see behind me hundreds. They've been chanting. They've been calling for uh, fair uh, negotiations for their contract. We did speak to the hospital earlier, and they said that they are fully staffed, they are prepared for uh, the gaps that this will leave them this whole week. It's going to go every day until next Sunday, 7 a.m. to 8.30 p.m., um, unless they offer to go back to the negotiation table. And we want to talk about how this impacts the general system here in Hawaii and uh, Oahu uh, in general. So let's talk to Dr. Jim Ireland. He is the director of Honolulu EMS. And so, uh, Dr. Arlen, tell us about how strikes like this can affect our overall emergency response system. Good morning. And, you know, first of all, we're, we're neutral in this. We want both sides to get together and come to an agreement as soon as they can. Obviously, we love nurses. We know how, we know how hard they work. But we really just want them to get back together and, and solve this. Kapiolani is a very important hospital in our system. It takes care of the sick and injured children, as well as uh, mothers who are in labor and, and having pregnancy complications. We bring about five ambulances here a day, on average, sometimes more. Um, and, and we have, you know, um, I, or I have two concerns. One is, will the ambulances be able to get to the emergency room, get past the line, and get patients to the hospital? That's number one. And then number two, once the patients are inside, is there going to be um, adequate care for them and the transfer over to the staff. Um, the administration has assured us that um, there will be no reduction in services, uh, but we need to make sure, and we'll be out here every day and we'll be monitoring the ambulance uh, traffic in and out um, just to make sure there's no uh, problems with our patients in the pre-hospital setting getting care here. What is the contingency plan? Should there be a heaven forbid, like a large disaster that requires specialized care for pregnant women or children or, you know, the specialized services that they get here at Kapiolani? Well, you know, um, there are other hospitals that have maternity services um, on Oahu, Queens, Castle, Kaiser, and also Tripler for military members. Um, so uh, mothers could go to those hospitals to deliver um, if there were an issue here. Um, and children really can go to any ER initially, and then if they need hospitalization, can be transferred from an outlying ER to this hospital. Um, you know, we're hoping we don't have to do that. We still want to bring patients here. But again, we'll just be monitoring every day and then see how things go. And just generally, when we talk about our healthcare industry, we have been suffering a shortage of nurses and staff in general. Um, is there something you could talk about as far as how we can improve uh, the conditions that some of these nurses are asking for? You know, they, according to them, they're saying that they're not getting the uh, the safe ratios that they want in terms of giving quality patient care. And I know you've been in the healthcare business for a while. So, is there anything that we could do to alleviate those concerns? Well, you know, I think the governor has um, put out a good plan as far as loan forgiveness for for certain groups of uh, healthcare providers. I think that will really help with recruitment. Um, you know, we know there's a nationwide paramedic shortage. So at the, at the city, we're looking at different things for our own retention for our EMTs and paramedics. Uh, we know there's a doctor shortage in Hawaii. Um, you know, there's only so many nursing schools in Hawaii um, to graduate nurses. So I think really when you look at the um, shortages in all many levels of health care, uh, really everything should be on the table to look at recruiting good people into the field and also retaining them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, when we talk to a lot of these nurses who are on the picket line, they don't really want to walk away from the emergency room or from the uh, hospital care that they're providing, but they've felt that this is the only way to get attention. I mean, in your experience over the years, this is, was the first strike, I guess, the union authorized in 50 years. Um, is there something that could have been prevented, or is there something that we can build in for the long term to prevent these types of things from coming up every three years when contract negotiations are up? You know, I don't think there's an easy answer uh, for that, but I do know that anybody who goes into healthcare, almost everybody who goes into healthcare, does it because they have this sense of service and they have uh, a caring personality and they're dedicated to taking care of other human beings, whether you're an EMT or a paramedic, a nurse, a technician, a doctor. So that sense of just wanting to do the best for your patient and do your best taking care of people, um, it's a real honorable profession, you know, um, all of healthcare. And, and so I think anything we can 
um, do again to recruit more and retain more in all levels of health care um, is, is good for the system. And you said for your staff, for our EMTs out there, our paramedics, how are they bracing for some of these hiccups that may occur during this week? Have you given them training or any kind of um, advice as they go forward through this week? No, you know, I think, again, we're just going to be monitoring the situation here. And again, our two concerns are, one, can we get to the patients to the emergency room? And two, will they get adequate care once they're here? The administration has assured us that they will, but we're going to be monitoring and we have contingency plans if that's not the case. Well, I appreciate you sharing your side of it because, again, uh, it's a system-wide thing that we are monitoring. When one hospital uh, gets affected, the whole system gets affected, right? It's a whole ecosystem. Yep, exactly. And this is a specialty hospital for women and children, and so that does have a special niche in our system. Okay. And that was Dr. Uh, Jim Ireland with uh, Honolulu EMS. And again, guys, we will be covering this throughout the day and the week because, frankly, unless these two sides can meet in the middle and renegotiate this contract, we will be seeing this every day uh, through Sunday. All right, reporting live here, Annalisa Burgos, Hawaii News Now. Back to you, Billy. Annalisa, really quickly, I want to ask you, other entities are watching this happen as it all plays out, uh, correct, in this next week, and this could affect future negotiations with other unions? Yeah, that's right, Billy. Uh, earlier, we spoke to Queens Medical Center uh, nurse Daniel Ross, and he told us that the uh, Queens contract is up for negotiation. It ends in May. So they are watching very closely what happens with this contract negotiations uh, because it sets the tone for ratio, nurse-patient ratio. Again, we spoke to hospital COO uh, Gidget Rosetta, who said that they are it's about flexibility for the hospital and it's not about firm uh, firm numbers that is their argument again it's a it sounds like a on both sides there's a little bit of difference in how they define ratio both care about patient safety both people care about health care quality uh, both parties do but again they just can't seem to get the definitions and uh, just meet at the middle there so we'll have to watch and again the other unions are watching it as well all right, Annalisa Burgos in front of Kapiolani Women's and Children's Hospital this morning.